well students we have learned lagrange and newton's form of interpolating polynomials we have also understood that due to the uniqueness property of interpolating polynomials both these forms lead to the same interpolating polynomial for a given set of data lagrange form is well suited for theoretical studies because of its nice mathematical structure however from the computational point of view it is less preferred on the other hand newton's form of interpolating polynomial is preferred computationally because higher order polynomials can be constructed using the lower order polynomials by adding extra terms to them nevertheless the form that we have introduced in the last class is no way better than the lagrange interpolation formula as far as the computational efficiency is concerned to achieve computational efficiency we have to bring in a concept called newton's divided difference which we will learn in this lecture assume that we are given a data set generated from a function f and it is given in this table recall that the newton's form of interpolating polynomial that we derived in the last class is given like this here a not is equal to f of x not which now i will denote by f square bracket x not similarly a1 can be written as f of x1 minus p not of x1 divided by x1 minus x not since p not is a constant polynomial which is equal to f of x not this can be written as f of x1 minus f of x not divided by x1 minus x not now i will denote this by a new notation like this f of x not comma x1 that's a square bracket similarly a2 i will write as f of x not x1 x2 and so on in general an if you recall it is given by f of xn minus p n minus 1 of xn divided by xn minus x not xn minus x1 and so on till xn minus xn minus 1 right i will give a similar notation to this also which is given by f of square bracket x not x1 up to xn well in the last class we have remarked that the newton's form of interpolation given in this form is no way better than lagrange form why because in this form we have to anyway compute the coefficients an and they all involve the lower degree polynomial pn minus 1 right and therefore to compute pn we have to compute all the lower degree polynomials and not only that we have to store them in the memory because they all have to be used in the coefficients of the polynomial pn so that was the main drawback now the question is can i write an equivalent formula to this right for instance for a1 if you recall actual formula is given like this you can just put n equal to 1 here and get this and that due to the fact that p not is a constant polynomial we got it in in a rather nice way similarly my interest is to write this expression in a equivalent form where this lower degree polynomial is not coming into the picture that is the main aim for us now for that this notation 
is more convenient. So we will write the Newton's form of interpolating polynomial with this new notation Pn of x equal to, you remember this is a naught. Now I prefer to write it as f of x naught square bracket. And all these are like x naught x1, right? F of x naught comma x1 is my a1 and so on, right? Therefore, this is my a k. Now I prefer to write it in this new notation. Okay, we have only changed the notation. What are we going to achieve from just changing the notation? That is the question now. We can see that this term, which is nothing but a k, can also be computed using this formula. That is what our aim is. If you recall, this is our a n. We have given a new notation to that. And that can be written recursively with the help of this new notation like this. There are more advantages to write a n in this form as we will see little later. But first, let us formally define what it is. In fact, it is called the nth order divided difference for a given function f and for a given n distinct nodes. Let us first formally define this notion. The definition is very clear from a small observation that this term is nothing but the coefficient of the nth degree term in the polynomial Pn. That is, it is the coefficient of x power n, right? You can clearly see it from the way Pn is written. Let us put this itself as the basic definition of the nth order divided difference. Let x0, x1 up to xn be distinct nodes. Let Pn of x be the polynomial interpolating a function f at these nodes. Then the coefficient of x power n in the polynomial Pn of x is denoted by f of square bracket x0, x1 up to xn and is called the nth divided difference of f. Before going to prove that the nth order divided difference can be computed using this formula, let us first prove an important property of the nth order divided difference, which is the symmetric property. The nth order divided difference is a symmetric function of its argument. That is the property. What it means? You take x0, x1 up to xn, you permute them in any way you want. And the new numbers, let us denote by z0, z1, and so on up to zn. It may be that z0 is nothing but x3, z1 is nothing but x10 like that. This may be something, say, x3 uh, like that. So you just shuffle these numbers and call that newly arranged number as z0, z1, z2 up to z. Okay. So any way you can do. Then the pr property says that you consider the divided difference with these nodes. And that will be the same as the divided difference with these nodes. By looking at the property itself, you can immediately prove it. It's not very difficult to prove. Why? Because Z0, Z1 up to Zn are just per permutations of the given nodes X0, X1 up to Xn, right? It means we are just interchanging the nodes X0, X1, X2 up to Xn. And then we are just relabeling them, right? We are not changing their values. We are only relabeling the nodes x0, x1 up to xn after just rearranging them in some order. That's all. Therefore, it's only the order which is changed, but none of the values are changed. Therefore, the polynomial, that is the interpolating polynomial for the function f generated from x0, x1 up to xn and 
the polynomial that is generated using z0, z1 up to zn, they both should be same using the uniqueness condition of the interpolating polynomial, right? Because we never change their values. Therefore, the function values will not change. It's only for our reference, we have just labeled it, right? Therefore, the coordinates in the data set are not changed. Only thing is their order is changed. Therefore, the polynomial generated by both these data sets should be the same because of the uniqueness property. And therefore, by the definition, since the divided difference is the coefficient of the highest degree term, that is xn, that coefficient should not be say, different because the polynomials of these two data sets finally are coinciding. Therefore, the coefficient of xn should also be the same. That is f of x0, x1 up to xn should be the same as f of z0, z1 up to zn. Well, that is the proof of this property. Let us prove the formula for the nth order divided difference. The formula is given by this. That is the nth order divided difference of the function f at the nodes x0, x1, x2 up to xn minus 1 comma xn is computed by first computing the n minus 1th order divided difference using these nodes that gives us f of x1, x2 up to xn, right? And then you take these nodes and find the divided difference of that one, f of x0, x1 up to xn minus one. And then you find xn, that is the last node minus x0. That is what finally we will get as x0, x1 up to xn. Let us see how to prove this. Recall by definition, this is nothing but the coefficient of x power n in the polynomial pn of x, right? So we have to use this fact to derive this formula for the nth order divided difference. Let us start the proof with certain notations. We will use the usual notation pn of x for the interpolating polynomial of the function f at the nodes p x0, x1 up to xn. Similarly, we use the notation pn minus 1 of x. This is also as usual. The polynomial interpolating the function f at the nodes x0, x1 up to xn minus 1. And finally, we will use the notation q of x. This is probably we are introducing here for our convenience, which is the polynomial interpolating the function f at the nodes x1, x2 up to xn, right? So again, you have n nodes, x0, x1, x2 up to xn minus 1, xn, if you construct the polynomial with all these nodes, that is denoted by pn of x. If you take only first n minus one nodes, then that polynomial is pn minus one of x. And I'm leaving the first node and take the second node onwards till the last node right? That is denoted by q of x. So just keep these notations in mind. And we want to prove that pn of x is equal to pn minus 1 of x plus x minus x naught by xn minus x naught into q of x minus pn minus 1 of x. Let us prove this 
first and from here we can immediately get the required formula. First observe that this is a polynomial of degree less than or equal to n, right? What about this? This is a polynomial of degree less than or equal to n minus one. And similarly, this is also a polynomial of degree less than or equal to n minus one, right? Because we have used this notation q of x to denote the interpolating polynomial of f at these nodes, there are n nodes here. Therefore, the polynomial has to be of degree one less, that is n minus one at most, right? Now, you can see that this entire product, that is the second term, will be a polynomial of degree less than or equal to n, right? So full right hand side is also a polynomial of degree less than or equal to n. This is the first observation. So from here you can see that the right hand side is a polynomial of degree less than or equal to n. And similarly, the left hand side is also a polynomial of degree less than or equal to n. So this is what we have understood so far. Next, let us see what happens to the right hand side at the point x equal to x naught. We can see that p n minus one of x naught is equal to p n of x naught, right? That shows that at x naught, both sides are equal. Similarly, we take any x belongs to the set x1, x2 up to xn minus 1. We can see that pn minus 1 of x. Remember, x is one of the node points from x1 to xn minus 1. And that is going to be equal to f of x because of the interpolating condition because pn minus 1 of x is the interpolating polynomial of f at these points, right? Similarly, q of x, when x is one of these node points, that will also be equal to f of x, right? Because q is also an interpolating polynomial with nodes as this, and the nodes which we are considering now is a subset of this, right? Therefore, Q also takes the value f of x at these points. Therefore, the second term on the right hand side is zero. And we therefore have P n minus one of x, which is equal to f of x. And since P n of x is also a polynomial interpolating the function f at much more nodes than what are given here. Therefore, that will also be equal to p n of x. So in this case also, you can see that the right hand side is equal to the left hand side, right? So for x equal to x naught and for x equal to x1, x2 up to xn minus 1, we have proved that the right hand side is equal to the left hand side. Finally, let us take xn. In this case, we have pn minus 1 of xn plus xn minus x0 divided by xn minus x0. That becomes 1. And we have q of xn minus pn minus 1 of xn, right? And that is equal to Q of Xn. And Q is an interpolating polynomial of F at these nodes where Xn is also included, right? Therefore, this will be equal to F of Xn. And that is, in fact, also equal to Pn of Xn because Pn is also an interpolating polynomial of F with xn as one of the nodes. So that shows that the right hand side 
is a interpolating polynomial of f at the points x0, x1 up to xn. And now we also know that Pn of x is also an interpolating polynomial of f at the points x0, x1 up to xn. Therefore, by uniqueness, we can see that Pn of x is equal to the right hand side, which, which is also proved to be an interpolating polynomial with same nodes. Therefore, they both has to coincide for all x. That is what is important. So the idea of proving that this polynomial is equal to this polynomial, what we did is we first showed that the right hand side is a polynomial of degree less than or equal to n. And we have shown that in fact, it satisfies all the interpolating conditions at the node points x0, x1 up to xn. And therefore, the right hand side is also an interpolating polynomial of f at the nodes x0, x1 up to xn. Since pn is also an interpolating polynomial of f at these nodes, we concluded that pn of x is equal to this polynomial for all x, thanks to the uniqueness theorem. Now let us compare the coefficients. These two are same polynomials. Therefore, all their coefficients have to be the same. So when you compare the coefficient of xn for the polynomial pn of x, that is by definition the nth order divided difference, right? Now let us see what is the coefficient of the highest degree, that is xn, for the right-hand side polynomial. Well, this coefficient is, well, for this polynomial, the coefficient is going to be of xn is zero because this is a polynomial of degree less than or equal to n minus one, right? Therefore, its coefficient of xn should be zero. Now let us see what is the coefficient of xn for this polynomial, that is the second term. Well, that will be one into coefficient of xn minus one of q of x, right? Minus coefficient of xn minus one of pn minus one of x divided by, you have this constant, xn minus x naught, right? So that is how it will look like. Now, what is the coefficient of xn minus one? That is the highest degree term in the polynomial q of x. That is nothing but, by the definition, it's a it's an interpolating polynomial of f at the nodes x1, x2 up to xn. Therefore, it's the divided difference that is n minus first order divided difference at these nodes x1, x2 up to xn. And what is the coefficient of xn minus 1 of the interpolating polynomial. Remember again, this, this is the interpolating polynomial of f at the points x0, x1 up to xn minus 1. Therefore, that will be again n minus first order divided difference of f at x0, x1 up to xn minus 1, right? Therefore, this will now happens to be 1 by xn minus x0 into f of x1, x2 up to xn minus f of x0, x1 up to xn minus 1, right? And that is the coefficient of xn. That is what we have written here. And the first term coefficient is 0. Therefore, the right-hand side polynomial has the coefficient for xn to be exactly this term. You just compare it with what we want to show as the formula for the nth order divided difference. That is precisely this. 
Now, since they both are equal, therefore the coefficient of Xn of the left-hand side polynomial and the coefficient of Xn for the right-hand side polynomial, they both have to be equal, right? So, and that proves the theorem. You can go back and compare it with what we wanted to prove. That is precisely what we have proved here. Okay, we got a nice formula for the nth order divided difference. There is a way to compute these divided differences using a concept called divided difference table. Let us illustrate this table for the data set having six entries. The idea goes similar to other data sets with more entries. The divided difference table for the given data set looks like this. Let us explain to you how to construct this table for a given set of data. You first write the nodes in the first column and the function values in the second column. Then you should compute what is f of x0, x1. You can use the formula now, we have a nice formula for this, f of one order less than what we want, and that is evaluated at this node, that is x1 minus f of x0 divided by x1 minus x0, right? And zeroth order divided difference is nothing but the function value only, therefore, f of square bracket x1 is nothing but f of x1. And similarly, f of square bracket x0, that is the zeroth order divided difference of f at the node point x0 is f of x0 divided by x1 minus x0. You can see that this minus this divided by this minus this is exactly this value, right? Now you can clearly observe that this minus this divided by x2 minus x1 is this point. And similarly, this minus this divided by this minus this is this point. So, you write their value exactly in the position which is centered to these two nodes, similarly the other terms. That is how the divided difference table should look like. Similarly, if you take this term, you can see that f of x0, x1, x2, this is the second order divided difference, is written in terms of the first order divided difference, right? f of these numbers, x1, x2, minus f of these two nodes, x0, x1, divided by the last one, that is x2, minus the first one, that is x0, right? That is precisely, you can see that it is this term minus this term divided by, now what you should do is you go like this and this, pick up that value that is x2. Similarly, you go from the top one in the diagonal way. And then once you reach the function value column, you take the corresponding entry from the node that is x1. So that comes as the denominator. Similarly, to compute the value of the second order divided difference of f at x1, x2, x3, what you should do is you come diagonally down, pick up this term, go diagonally up and pick up this term and find the difference between them. And for the denominator, you go from here diagonally down 
keep going diagonally down and reach the function value column and then take this. And similarly, you go like this and take this. And therefore, f of x1, x2, x3 is nothing but f of x2, x3 minus f of x1, x2 divided by x3 minus x1. Similarly, the other things. Once you understand the logic, you can go ahead and compute the third order divided difference also. And that is nothing but f of x2, x3, x4 minus f of x1, x2, x3 divided by x4 minus x1, right? And similarly this. So if I ask you to construct a divided difference table by giving some numbers like this, you have to carefully write the divided difference table in this structure, okay? So these two are used in computing this value and that will sit at the center position of these two. Similarly, these two are used to compute this value and this will sit at the center of these two and similarly the other. In olden days, people used to construct the divided difference table and then from here, they pick up all these leading diagonal elements because they come as the coefficient of the corresponding interpolating polynomial for the function f, which is of degree five, right? And that is given by this. So if you are given a data set of six nodes, then you construct the interpolating polynomial of degree five and the Newton's form of this polynomial is nothing but you just pick up all these first diagonal terms and simply put them in this order, f of x naught, which is coming from the first element of the column for the function values, plus this is coming from the first element here of this third column times x minus x naught. And similarly, the third term is coming from here into x minus x naught into x minus x1 and so on. So once you get the divided difference table, you just have a simple recipe to construct your Newton's interpolating polynomial. Because of this, this divided difference table used to be very popular in olden days, but nowadays we have powerful computers. We just have some nice recursive subroutines that can compute your divided differences. Therefore, writing this divided difference table has become an outdated exercise these days. But from the examination point of view, we can always ask such questions and you should learn how to construct the table. In the table, there are two things. Of course, the values of the divided differences are important. You have to compute them correctly. You have a formula for that. And second also is the structure in which the table has to be written. That is also important. Further, if I ask you to indicate how you computed certain terms, for instance, f of x1, x2, x3, and x4, then you will have to also draw the arrows and show how you computed them, just like how I did above. What is the advantage of this divided differences, now it is very apparent that you don't need to remember the lower degree interpolating polynomials at all, you see. You can simply compute them using this simple formula, right? That is the advantage of the divided difference table. With the divided difference notation, therefore, Newton's form of interpolating polynomial becomes more computationally efficient than Lagrange form of interpolating polynomial.